January 1st, <laughs> 2020. Guys, Happy New Year. that beat so that's why i let it play <laughs> but happy new year's guys it is officially 2020 and i didn't really think about it till i saw everybody post about it yesterday welcome to a new decade <laughs> we're living in our 20s and now whole age of 2010 to 2019 is all behind us a whole decade man so be thankful for being here one more year and be humble about it don't take it for granted there's so many people who've lost their lost families lost loved ones in this last amount of time and that mean to be 100 with you we don't deserve any better so you know there's a there's a purpose in your life there's a reason you're here and even the people who lost is a purpose for their families or somebody so don't ever try to make it seem like you know Thank God for me that I'm here because I could have been one of those people that died. Because while it's true, the arrogance in that statement is just is a slap in the face for families and other people who are in the wake of dealing with losing someone and probably still trying to understand or trying to find reason. You know, it's times like that that actually takes people away from God because of our, you know, our self and how we feel that things should be versus the will that God has in store for people's lives and why things have happened. So I just have I really had to make that known. I didn't wanna say that without giving that because too many times I go to church and hear people say, Well, you know, I could've I could have not woken up this morning and all I all I ever think of is, well, what about the families who just had somebody who didn't wake up this morning? Is that favor not over them because of that loss? No just means that there's a path that God has that this happens death comes to everybody and it's hard to feel God's will when our flesh mourns so (laughs) that was a real real sad way to start this thing off but either way happy new years man and it just shows in this last decade for me things have changed I can say in 2010 I was nowhere near becoming a minister and now 2020 i'm ordained i got licensed in 2014 and i got ordained in 2018 not only that i got married in 2016 and we're expecting our first child so hey god move man and it's a beautiful thing so it's not about me i just really took four minutes to ramble about things but we're getting it we're getting it back going with this podcast, man. Keep falling off. Not this year. We're gonna get it right. Am I right? There we go. I need that motivation. Whew. So let me cut this off. <laughs> so what I want to talk about for the first day of the new year is resolutions for the Christian. Now, I I am no one to say what you should or shouldn't do for your life, but the Bible has some things that we should be doing, and we don't do them. You know, we are still stuck in this mindset of being comfortable in very, very small things. We think that just going to 
church is all you need to do when you don't have a church lifestyle you know you don't have that in your heart the main thing about all these resolutions is having christ and having that change of heart that living after christ is bearing his cross and following him lifestyle in your heart you know once you do that there's scripture in i think first corinthians 13 that's the chapter about love and you know i didn't even mean to go to that but this is where my heart's taking me right now but before they even talk about love, the first three verses say this, and I'm going to read this in the Common English Bible version, just to make it a little bit easier for everybody, <laughs> myself included. And it says, if I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal, which basically saying, even if I have this ability, you see people all the time in church, whether it be preachers, whether it be people in a congregation that can speak in tongues. But it, the Bible says right here that if you don't have love, which we know that God is love. So I like to double this this verse, double the intensity of it by even substituting love for God. So if you don't have God, all you're doing is making noise. Verse two, it says, if I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. Verse three, if I give everything away that I have and hand over my own body to feel good about what I've done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. Now, listen to those three things. These three, these three things or four things that they talked about all sounds like stuff that we would deem as somebody like a very Christian person. But it says right here, just that one factor, not having love, not having God, that Christ change in your heart. And if you don't have that genuineness, none of it matters. And... That's that's really what we need to have about these resolutions or or just in life in general, because we all know that resolutions are just something we try to make on New Year's because it's like a new like it's a clean slate. Everybody looks at it as a clean slate slate. And we're like, now I'm going to do all this exercise. I'm going to. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be more productive and all this stuff. And surely enough, for most people, it kind of falls away very fast. <laughs> and it's unfortunate. Yeah, it definitely is. But, I mean, that's just kind of that nature. We just look at it as, oh, it's wiped clean. So now all the stuff I didn't do won't be looked at. And maybe I can try and start over. But we never really had that genuine enough of a change to really change. <laughs> so you're still doing the same stuff from last year. You just doing it on a new piece of paper. <laughs> if that makes sense. And y'all, I promise you, <laughs> this was not my story I was meaning to give you for the day. As far as like your scripture. Because I had a scripture that I want to give as... The I guess the scripture to hold on to for the new resolution, but that was very important, man. Considering that we do this like New Year, New Us, you know, New Year's resolutions, things we want to do better about ourselves. None of that's gonna matter if we don't really have that love of Christ, that change in our hearts, that change in our minds, that desires. That's what being born again. That's what repenting means. It's like to change of mind, to really sorrow and turn away from how we used to be. Because we don't even think about, we really don't have that genuine, I guess, disgust over what we were enough to make that change to be something new. And that's what we have to be coming into Christ, being born again. It says in um, Corinthians, you know, I'm a new creature. If anyone's in Christ, there's a new creature. The old is passed away. All things are becoming new. And it has to be like that. You really have to 
pass that old body away to be something new. It was very important. Now, I'm not going to be up here too long. <laughs> Trust me, I, I did a sports podcast. It's way too long every time. And even though it was really good, you know, a lot of reviews would say from close friends and others that you can't be that long. So that's not what I'm here to talk about either. <laughs> My scripture I want to give you into this new year is really just something to think on about Christ and about you living this Christian lifestyle and just realizing the intent of the word versus what we might have been taught to understand traditionally or modernly. So it's in Matthew seven chapter and I'm going to read from verse 13 to verse 23. And I'm going to read this in the King James Version. So I like it because it's like the origin for the English translation. And this was not as difficult as far as like the these and thous and those kind of words to get it. You know, it's pretty straightforward for King James. So the scripture reads, and I'm actually turning the music off on this one. Um, boom, by the boom. Verse 13, Matthew chapter 7. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there, many there be which go in thereat. It's just, just saying, many will be there, many will be going into that broad way that leadeth to destruction. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. There will be few that find it. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of, figs of thistles? Verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth down forth good fruit is hewn, hewn down, H-E-W-N, which is, I guess, cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits... Ye shall know them. That might be the key part of that jumble. It's why, wherefore, verse 20, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name hath cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, real fast, I want to go back through it, man, and um, break it down just a little bit. What I want to um, start off is back at the beginning. And it just says, enter ye at the narrow gate, the straight gate, because narrow is the way which leads unto life. But there'll be few that find it versus the wide, the wide gate that leads in destruction. And there's going to be many there that finds that path. So I really want you to think about that, man. You know, in America, Christianity is like the most popular thing, the most popular religion. But that's all it is. It's popular. There's very few that's actually living by it. And it's funny that coming on to this podcast it led me to read that beginning of first corinthians 13 because this kind of helps give that understanding of what it's saying right here because especially it gets deeper when it says like every good tree bringeth forth good fruit every bad tree bringeth bad fruit you know good can't produce evil evil can't produce good and so people are you know people automatically think like that's between killing people or you know, or donating to a nursing home. Like we look at it at extremes immediately, 
but you'll realize in the Bible, like, and it says, like, not having love is nothing. It doesn't matter what you do. You have to have that God in you. You have to have that Christ desire, that genuineness in your heart. And it also tells you that sin is just disobeying God. You know, sin is not, I mean, sin is, it does like the Ten Commandments, I shall not kill, I shall not steal, I shall not bear false witness, um, you know, I shall not, uh-oh, <laughs> I shall not bear false witness, I shall not kill, I still, I shall bow down, I shall that eat, and serve thee for the Lord, that God is a jealous God, whew, I almost forgot that one, but, you know, you know, there are things that God totally refuses us from, but just not doing what God is telling you to do is sin. So that is that evil. It's not just saying that, oh, well, I go to church and, you know, I'd say I love everybody. Like I tell everybody I love them. So I'm not producing any bad. But if you're not producing good, you're only producing evil. Like idleness, not doing anything, it's basically doing evil. Like think about it as a basketball team because sometimes that sounds harsh. If LeBron James just sat on the bench, he's not doing anything against his team. He's not telling any other teams how to beat them. He's not telling them their playbook, but he just sat down. Is he helping or hurting his team? Hurting them. Everybody will easily say that. It's the same manner here. You know, God wants us to be this one cohesive body. So everything that he has designed in us for us to do is important. Which is why we have to be active. You know, we can't be inactive and call ourselves Christian. And it says, beware of false prophets. I know I jumped in, I'm coming back to it. And it just tells you that, you know, again, we think of evil in this, you know, Antichrist figure as something of being like goth and heavy metal. These people have the skulls on their heads and stuff. That's the, that's, that's the only way we view evil. That's the way we view the devil as this red being with horns. But the Bible says that, you know, the devil was beautiful. It was the devil was once an angel when he was in heaven. And it says in the New Testament that even the angel presents, I mean, even the devil presents himself as an angel of light. So does his demons. As they, they look the part, which is why it says, you know, beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's clothing. Because the, the enemy isn't going to look like the enemy. But you will know him. Why it says you will know them by their fruits. If they're not teaching, if they're not living that lifestyle for God, then are they really for God? And that's the same thing for our lives. If we're not living that life for Christ just because we avoid doing stuff, does that still make us for God? And it just says not. And that, that really comes to a head from verse 21 through 23, where it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, if I don't know about you, but when I was little, once I first got baptized, you know, they told me that, you know, just because I got baptized and I believe I'm saved, that's it. There's nothing you could do to remove it. <laughs> and, you know, I live and it didn't change my lifestyle. You know, because of that, I just felt like I had a protective bubble over my head and now I can do whatever I want. The Bible says it's not like that. Even the Bible says it's better for someone to have not known Christ at all, for them to have come into Christ and turn away from him. It also says that, you know, if you go against God, you turn from God and you try to come back. It's like trying to sacrifice Jesus all over again. And that's not how it's supposed to be. That's bringing, it says it's actually bringing a mockery to the salvation that Jesus had for your life. So it's telling you that these people that might not, that won't enter into the kingdom of heaven are going to be people who we sound, who sound like Christians. But it says, I know you not. Because why? First Corinthians, again, you don't have God. You don't have that genuineness of Christ in your heart. You haven't been born again, truly. You haven't repented of your sins, truly. Man, I'm going to leave it there. I didn't I didn't even intend to go 20 minutes into this. But if you don't do anything else for 2020 or from this day forward, I want you to really read the scripture. Don't don't just listen to me. It's listen to the word. You know, 
uh, I'm me, we, any minister, preacher, form of minister, or you know, servant of Christ. It's nothing more but a reflection of what you're supposed to be, of what Christ wants all of us to be. So, you know, I challenge you to read that scripture if you need that proof, you know, read it for yourself. We're all in age. We have the ability. We have access to it. The Bible app is free on your phone or tablet. And you have a smartphone or tablet. But if you're you're really in Christ, if you really want to be a Christian, there's something more that you have to do than just going to church. There's something more than you have to do than just saying because you pray every night. And that's it. You really need to reflect on your lifestyle. Then reflect of Jesus' life, Jesus's lifestyle. Reflect of the disciples' lifestyle. Reflect of the the ministers, the prophets, the people that God used throughout the Bible in their lifestyle. Because not all of them, trust me, not all of them were good. But see how what happened when God entered their life. The change, the dedication, the lifestyle that they lived for Christ. My prayer for anybody and for everybody is that your hearts will find Christ if you haven't already. And if you believe in him, that you will do more. Because in the book of James, it says, you know, it says that, you know, you think, you know, because you believe it's good, but even the devils, even the demons believe. That's why it says faith without works is dead. Because the faith is supposed to bring a genuine action. If you sow a seed, you expect it to start growing. You can't think that you're a seed planted by Christ and nothing's growing. But you have to do it. You have to be active. The same way if you want to lose weight, you have to start making the effort to go to a gym. You know, you can't remove the fat from your body. But if you start doing these actions, the reward of it will be the weight loss. Repent of your sins. Realize that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And he died for you. You don't have to get ready for it, as most people say. And I'm going to talk about that on another subject. You know, it tells us in Scripture that Jesus died for our sins before we even came to that realization. So you don't have to get ready for it. He's already died for you. He's just waiting for you to come to him. Guys, I'm C. Moody. It's always been my only hope that people find Christ. I love you guys. I hope anything that your your business is or whatever you're doing glorifies God and is successful. And I hope more importantly than that, that you find God's will for your life in this season. And you can live with purpose. It's going to be hard. Trust me, you're not going to get it right on the first try. It's going to be a while. But I at least hope that you begin to make that effort towards Christ. Because once you start leaning on him, the obstacles will be easier to fight. The challenges, the the inner the spirits against you will become easier to fight. That doesn't mean they won't come. It just means that having Christ in your life will help you, will guide you. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because God is with us. His rod and his staff will comfort us. And even when we're presented in the face of our enemies, the anointeth our head with oil. He'll bless us. He'll clean us. So much so that our cup runneth over. I love you guys. This has been Living Body Talks. This has been C. Moody. 
2020. I'll see y'all. God bless.